talk about correlation functions of conserve, conserve currents in four-dimensional CFT. Thank you. It is such so to thank the organizers, especially Augusto, for inviting me to speak. So this is the title. It will be mostly on this paper and work in progress. So here's my plan. There will be a short motivation why one should interest correlation functions of conserved currents. Then a quick review of what is called bubble conformal invariance and some implications, in particular treatment in terms of biocal and biharmonic biocal fields which leads to severe constraints on the case when there is chaos in the theory. Then there will be a complete classification of the all three point functions of symmetric conserved higher spin currents. And I conclude with some considerations over the four point function of U1 currents aiming at the four point function of four stress energy tensor. So this should be understood as a preliminary exercise of analyzing the four points uh, functions of the stress energy tensor. And there will be simple problems. Sorry. So, we should go so motivation, maybe there is no reason to explain why one should be interested in conformal field theory in this audience, but anyway, the conformal field theories are very much constrained, but non-trivial, as we have learned throughout the years. And three point functions are almost fixed. This is, there is still freedom, but this is not a functional freedom, it's a freedom of some constants. While conserved currents, they encode all the symmetries in the theory. In particular, the stress energy tensor appears in the operator product expansion of every two fields, every field with its conjugate, because gravity has to couple to everything in the theory. Still, four point functions are difficult. And one, way to treat them is to work with the conformal partial wave expansions. But there are many conformal partial waves. In particular, to every two, every pair of three-point functions, there is a different conformal partial wave. In the scalar case, this means just one conformal partial wave. However, when the spin of the external state is large, they proliferate a lot. On the other side, one can whether there is uh, the analog of the common mandura theorem in uh, conformal field theory. There is no real uh, S-matrix here. However, if you have infinite number of charges, the question is, can such a theory be non-free? And the answer in three dimensions was no, there are only three theories. This is the mandura synergy book of 2011. In four dimensions, not no. And finally, I have also a personal motivation for studying this. 25 years ago, I have written a paper about the three point functions of stress energy tensor. And then I was sure, because I was young, that in a year or so, also the four point functions will be known. Then uh, I recently realized that oh, the three point functions are still not known. So I returned to the subject. Well, this is what all of us know about conformal transformation. The rescaling of the metric contain Poincaré, you have patients and special conformal transformations which globally have this form and know that this data can vanish in Minkowski space. So they are ill-defined globally. Infinitesimal conformal transformations, they uh, preserve the closer ordering so you cannot map continuously a world space-like world line into a time-like one. However, if you have a pair of points and a pair of points, you can always map them if they are not uh, white like both of them. You can always map one of the pairs into another by a finite transformation. So you can change space like separation to time like. It's important that it's pairs because you cannot do it continuously on a line. This is what is known about representations. I'll consider only elementary induced representations. Uh, they have been classified by MAC, the unitary ones. They are labeled by the two half integers which give the SO2C finite dimensional representation, <coughs> sorry, and by the real, which is the scale of the dimension. There are these two uh, unitary bounds, inequalities, which the dimension and the labels have to satisfy, and in particular for a symmetric tensor, a flat car, the twist, which is the difference between the dimension and the rank, has to be one or equal to two. Going to conformal, uh, global conformal invariance. 
just because you can change this like uh, separation by, uh, to time like separation, you may ask what is the condition which will ensure me that I will have uh, uh, commutation in space like uh, um, distances consistent with conformal invariance. So you can ask uh, uh, that your correlation functions are invariant under the action of SU22. And there are a number of corollaries. Uh, the other show present Sanikov and Tog and the other three we appear in different uh, permutations through the years. So there are a number of corollaries. First of all, for bosons the dimensions have to be integer. Second, fields satisfy Hugo totality, which means that they mute for non white operation. Just because you choose a, a um, time like uh, separation, then make a conformal transformation and it turns out to be space like, so it has to vanish. Third, and this is more important, correlation functions are rational functions of the coordinate differences. Where mu's are integer, and due to the cost of decomposition, because the two point functions have to uh, dominate the expansion, they are bounded from above their precise inequalities which mu have to satisfy. Then, a useful tool for analyzing such theories is the uh, introduction of bilocal fields. One can expand the operator per expansion. This is done here for simplicity in the case of a scalar of dimension delta. After the two-point function, you have a series of singular terms, then you have the finite part. And the series of the singular terms can be organized in bilocal conformal fields, which are orthogonal for different k, and each of which is uh, just a resummation of all the tensors which appear here of twist to k. A particular case is the V1, which contains all the twist 2 contributions. And it can be shown that because the twist 2 fields are conserved, in such a theory you have always an infinite number of conserved currents, and V1 is biharmonic, so it has to satisfy the equation in both variables. And this biharmonicity constrains very strongly the correlation functions. In particular, one can show that for an arbitrary endpoint function, all particular uh, structure of the singularities can be present. What's important is that the terms can be singular in x13, x14, but then you cannot have an x15 singularity. So there can be only two uh, different singularities with respect to x1. The scalar case has been analyzed rather carefully, and the following results are, uh, have been shown. If you have a scalar of dimension 2, then such a theory is free. To be precise, you may have many such scalars, but then you uh, can map the, all the correlation functions to the ones of free scalars uh, with the global symmetry algebra O, U, or S, P. If delta is 3 or 4, then there uh, is a complete classification of the four point functions, but there are questions with uh, higher point functions, 6, 8, etc. So it's not clear how it works. Oh, and there are also some preliminary results for n equal 1 supersymmetric theories. And the additional uh, constraints come from the fact that if you have a chiral multiple, it has two scalar fields with the dimension different. So there are both constraints coming in the second one, and they are not completely equivalent. Be beyond the scalar case, it has not been done more, and essentially because there are many more possible conformal structures, this leads to operation the mixing problem, and also that the local fields in this case are much more complicated. There is no good understanding of the complete structure for the moment. So this brings us to the uh, case of conserved currents. Conservation is compatible with conformal invariance only if the twist of field is equal to 2. So we have a class of fields, each of them of twist 2. I consider only the case of symmetric uh, conserved currents, and in this case it's useful to contract the indices of the um, current, current, the wrong indices of the current with a white light vector. It simplifies much of the computation and also exhibits certain rather non-trivial structure as we have, we'll see in a moment. So 
it gives simple conform mode transformations because each of these terms here is uh, a summation of R terms because it contains the derivative with respect to A. However, the conservation law is not linear anymore, which been, has been shown by Barman and Todorov that it can be written in this way. And this is true for any D. In fact, this one here is D halves minus one. So such a uh, procedure can be done for D general. The point functions can be written in this way, where uh, a B is a two-point conformal covariant of weights 1, 1 in x1 and x2. This is this expression here. If we have not uh, required that a square and b square are zero, there will be a series of trace subtractions, a tower of them here, but now they are not there. I have not as asked for uh, conservation for the moment. But this function is automatically conserved. And together with the OPE postulate, this means that all endpoint functions in a theory like that will be automatically conserved. So, if you have a um, current which has dimension r plus 2 in a theory like that, where the OP holds, all the functions will be conserved. Then the question is what about the three point functions? So, the first part of my talk will be. Uh, solving the problem of find all the three-point functions of three conserved currents, arbitrary ranks, using a square equal b square equal, uh, equal, equal zero, and there are a number of questions that one has to ask and to answer. First of all, find the primitive covariance which can appear in such three-point functions. Then, analyze the parity, even and odd. Then, find the symmetry under permutations. Find how many functions are there. As we will see, the quite a problem but too recently and then possibly find the explicit form and the generating function. So going in order, there are precisely six even covariants. Three are two point functions, three are effectively three point functions. And the way it's listed here, note that the convention is that the way to respect to xi is uh, the same as the homogeneity degree of the corresponding white white vector. There is only one odd covariant which can be written in this rather complicated form in order to exhibit the symmetry, but what's, in, what's important it is that it is just one. In four dimensions, they are independent in the sense that R and R are the independent, and even of odd one indeed can be expressed in terms of the even ones. In D larger than 5, R and R are still independent, but there is no point covariant, and the reason is just that there are not enough vectors to contract with the 5 or more anti-symmetric indices of the epsilon. In three dimensions, it's rather different. The even ones are not independent, they satisfy a non-linear relation, while there are three different or three-point covariants. This is the result of Osborne and Petko, while this is where there is an B in. <coughs> How can we show that they are independent? Using auxiliary tool, we can make a conformal transformation and send one of the points to infinity. And the, the prescription is make a conformal inversion, x goes in x prime over x prime squared, and a, a translation to send x prime to zero. Then, this will be the transformation of the corresponding current. But if you do this, you can send one of the points to infinity, the another to zero, and then the three-point function will depend only on BC and the remaining coordinate. And this tells you that you have only seven possible structures, six even and one odd. What's important is that you can do the argument the other way around. This is that if you start by an arbitrary Lorentz variant and scale with a function of B and C and Z, you can uplift it in a unique way to a conformal three-point function. These invariants are a good basis if you consider tensors. You may have tensors not only symmetric like I have done up to now, also arbitrary uh, symmetry, but they have to be uh, states of parity. If you have spinners, spin tensors, or 
more complicated representations, for example, two zero of one, which is not eigenstate of parity, then this is not sufficient, and the generalization has been done by, by total of this year. It's an uh, old idea, I think it goes uh, to the beginning of the 19th century. Uh, you introduce uh, complex uh, spinners, commuting, and then you can introduce new invariants, which are contraction of the spinners with the sigma, and in this notation, the R's are not primitive. They are products of Pj times Pji, and then can be also other invariants, which are cubic lambda, etc. Now, it's a, in this approach, uh, there is a problem to choose a base of invariants because uh, it turns out that it's not obvious uh, whether this procedure goes to infinity or there is a finite number which gives everything. After this preliminary, <coughs> sorry, this preliminary is what is the general form of the three-point function? The general theme, uh, form of the three-point function can be written this way. We have a prefactor. This is, comes from the fact that you have we have only operators twist two, and then uh, the rest, rest in terms of R and L. They are powers constrained by scale invariance, and this both will be. Uh, conformal invariant, three-point functions of symmetric tensors, but still the conservation condition is not imposed. When you impose the conservation condition, you fix also partially this coefficient. There are two ways to impose the conservation condition. One is uh, to rewrite it as derivatives in terms of the R and L. This means a big third differential operator acting on. The other one is to use, and I find it simpler, the fact that you can send one of the points to infinity, reduce it to a function of A, B, C, and Z, and at this, in this case, it's again a third order differential operator, but it's much simpler. What about the permutation symmetry? Since under permutation, L changes sign, are, are mixed but don't change sign, and the same is true for O, one can uh, show immediately that the functions are even symmetric, anti-symmetric, depending on the parity of the sum R1 plus R2 plus R3, and they have inverse uh, symmetry, anti-symmetry for the even and odd case. And also that the three-point functions, and this will be important for the, uh, what will follow, are always of the even odd type for R even and odd. Now, the question is, how many of these functions there were? So, there were known, the answer was known in a surprisingly small number of cases. So, the first one is three currents. Schreier, in 1971, showed that two even and one odd. Then, uh, in the case of three stress energy G tensors, I found that there are three even, and this was generalized for D larger than four of the bad core. Then Elmer de Elmenger showed that in the case of uh, two stress energy tensors and the axial current, only one structure, which uh, put the end of a rather uh, long discussion whether there are one or two perturbation calculations were giving two uh, possible structures. And last year, Costa Penedones, Polonterichkov uh, calculated that for two stress tensors and an arbitrary tensor, there are three even ones, and they conjectured also uh, the number for the general case based on the correspondence of number of amplitudes of uh, massless fields in D plus one dimension. So starting from D dimension conserved currents, they map them to the uh, amplitudes in D plus one. So explicit check imposing the conservation condition on these expressions here shows that the number is given here. In the even case, it's the minimum of the three ranks plus one. In the odd case, it's minimum of the three ranks. And this confirms the conjecture of Costa Penedo and Richkov. And note that here there are 40 years from here to here, which is quite a surprise, honestly speaking. One would not expect that it would take so long to obtain it. So these numbers here, 
they um, can be neatly uh, understood if one uh, interprets these currents as made out of Weinberg fields. Free Weinberg, Weinberg fields of spin S0 and 0S. And when you uh, compute the possible conserved currents that you make out of this object, the number uh, turns out correctly. One warning, you have to consider both the abelian and the non-abelian ones. Starting just from the abelians, singles out only the even ones or only the odd ones, depending on the um, odd, consider. Well, and this is the main result. This is the generating function of all the even three-point functions and all the three-point functions of three conserved currents. So, theta is an auxiliary variable. I will comment on that in a moment. Uh, L and R and O are the introduced even and odd covariants. XABC is this particular combination. U and V can be written in this way, or are we written in this way. They depend only on R, 1 minus L, and I will explain why they depend only on this and W is just U plus V. So this is a closed expression, rather simple, which generates the three-point function in the following way. If you scale the invariance by row one, the one that have uh, vector A, etc., and then expand in power in row I and zeta, the coefficient of row two to the R1, row two to the R2, and row three to R3, zeta to the n will be a conserved three function for any zeta which runs from 0 or 1 in that case to the minimum of this and this condition comes from the fact that every time that you make such a rescaling zeta is effectively multiplied by row 1 times row 2 times row 3 this expression has a rather surprising property which it was not evident in the way the compact way that it was written and the point is the following. If you introduce the auxiliary invariance written here, then the expression GRR, which is ER, which is the expansion here, get, uh, divided by this factor, gives an uh, even, and this is true also for the odd case, but the formulas are slightly different. I have written only the even ones. Gives an uh, uh, even three-point function of three conserved curves, currents of equal rank. And then the even generating function can be written in the following way. It's some zeta to the r, gr, where gr is this combination here of the conserved function, and v and w, which we have defined. So what's surprising here is the following, or maybe it's not surprising, but for me it was surprising, that for a fixed power of zeta, there is always a common factor. All the functions which have zeta to the r have a common factor. And this can be understood in the following way. So uh, this, I just repeat here what I already said, that they can in families, each of the family has a common factor. And this can be understood again by the field construction in terms of the Weinberg S0 and 0S fields. A uh, nice explicit construction of uh, the conserved currents can be found in this paper, Georg von Sprotsoff and Vasiliev 2006. And the result is that uh, G0 are all the functions which contain free complex scalar. G1 is the free Dirac fermion, since I'm in the even case, in general it's the bio fermion indeed. G2 is the free Maxwell field, etc. Each of these families starts, in fact, with. Um, a conserved current which has uh, dimension to S plus 2 and the trace subtractions which are not present because we have chosen A squared B squared B squared equal C squared equal 0 are not present because uh, are not present and they would not respect factorization so this fact pulling out uh, is true only in the case where you consider no subtractions, which was one of the reasons for which this took so long time to be done, because if you don't subtract these um, trace factors, it's much more messy. Now, just one, maybe two, transparencies, how this was obtained. Uh, 
it's natural to act with the differential operator L, uh, the L, the LA, the LB, which just replaces two Ls with the A in uh, the answers for the three-point function. And then the general form is of this form. It's a function acting on a monomial. And you can do it, and you get a terrible mess, which you cannot understand what's coming on until you realize that if you factor out this factor, this was the common factor that conserved three-point function of three currents, then everything comes out neatly. Moreover, these differential operators, which can be written also as Bessel function, that's an uh, expansion of a Bessel, Bessel function JR, uh, also neatly factorize. The first factorization is due to the expressions in terms of a 0, 0 S field. I don't have a good understanding why also the second factorization happens. In general, one could expect also more complicated things. Fortunately, they don't happen. Now, then, if you have all the functions, writing a generating function is just resumming the series. My choice corresponds to expressing everything in terms of 1 minus L, 1 minus LB, and 1 minus LC. That's the reason why my U were expressed in this way. Immediately after uh, uh, my paper, there was a generalization of, uh, due to Zibuedov to any d larger than 4. In his notation, he acts on the exponents. This is the reason why he has Bessel functions think on the uh, exponents. What's important is also that uh, both factorization properties remain true for any d. But we had the three-point functions. Now, what can we do about four-point functions? Let's start considering the simplest case. I want a billion U1 current, and the reason that I am treating the billion case is that I have in mind stress tensor and it the, uh, has no uh, internal symmetry there, so that's the most closest case. But, uh, the four currents are the same one. Uh, the dimension is three, they are conserved. Building blocks out of four points are six two-point covariants of three-point ones, out of which only eight are independent. Most important, as we all know, they are also the two conformal invariant cross ratios. So the general form of the function will be like that. There will be arbitrary functions of the two uh, conformal invariants and then some polynomial of covariance L and R in front. Here, the first part of assumptions. I want an even conformal invariant function, and this means that P will be either quadruple in L or uh, R or the, um, R squared. I ask also for full permutation symmetry, and this means that S and T are related and also are mixed in a not complicated way because the L's are not independent. The curves are conserved, so this gives constraints on P and F. These are all rather simple things. Now come the two uh, more subtle assumptions. One of them is weak positivity or unitarity. Only the unitary representations have to appear in the operator product response currents. That's the nature of the require. However, it is, uh, so it uh, constrains the um, singularities for uh, small separations of the functions f. However, it's not a sufficient condition. The true condition that all the coefficients in the from a partial wave of expansion are positive, this I could not check and I'll explain in a moment why. Uh, so, and this is the most controversial assumption. I require that this are, thank you, I require that these are rational functions, the Fs. This excludes immediately theories with anomalous dimensions, like n equal 4 super young mills or things like that. However, it is nature if you require more conformal invariance or if you have a theory with an infinite number of conserved currents. In the theory with the infinite number of conserved currents, there will be a subsector in which this will be satisfied. The, the summation of the contributions of the conserved currents will lead to this. 
And this uh, has the consequence that they find a polynomial and not arbitrary functions of st and one over s1 over t. So you may ask, uh, are there solutions to all these assumptions? Yes, the three fields. And they seem so strong that you would expect that they're only the three fields. However, it's a surprise. Indeed, you find three, so, uh, so you find the two free fields, the master scalar and the master fermion, but there is also another one which satisfies everything I listed in the previous two transparencies. In the way it's written, it's not a form that I have uh, shown you before. This is just rewriting using the two, the product of two as psi is the determinant of uh, eta. You can rewrite it in the standard form, but this is much uh, shorter because in the standard form it takes five transparencies to show. In, moreover, in this way, it is obvious that it has the permutation symmetry. The conservation is manifest because the R is second derivative of a logarithm. So when you apply the divergence here, it's immediate that this will vanish. There are denominators which have three singularities with respect to x1. So this is not a free theory. I remind you that in a free theory, uh, one can have more than two, and the reason is that always these conserved currents are believed in the uh, uh, constitution fields. And the leading short distance singularities are of this form, the leading line cone is form. Operator product expansion. The leading terms are dimension for fields. The stress tensor, this is only one of the two possible structures that can appear in the product expansion of two currents the one which has singularity 1 over z to the 4. Uh, then there is a scalar of dimension 4. And then there is a rather strange field which uh, transforms in the representation 2, 0, 4, 0, 2. So it's a 10 component uh, field which has to satisfy all these properties. What about the subleading terms? One can do the expansion and find out that is the first representative of the uh, infinite family of surf current. This is not surprising. Phi 4 is the first representative of the higher twist operators, and this is also not surprising. What's very really surprising is that on top of this uh, field, you have a family of tensors of dimension 4%, which belong to these representations. And why surprising? Because it has dimension 4, but the unitarity bound for a field with that uh, word well, structure is three. While all the other fields in the family satisfy exactly the unitarity bound. So uh, in this way, we show that the, all the fields here satisfy the unitarity bound. So what I call the weak positivity is okay with this function. <coughs> what about the positivity condition? There are two general strategies in this case. One can expand the function in uh, partial waves and compute the coefficients and show that they are positive. There is a problem. Uh, the conformal partial waves are known for scalar operators very explicitly to Dolan and Osborne. Last year there has been uh, a paper by Costa Penedon and Paul Antonichkov where they have done the case of symmetric tensor exchanges and it is not very explicit which is my opinion. Uh, so I will find it difficult to apply. Uh, the general case in a very, very implicit form has been studied in uh, Senon's Duffin. The second possibility, which is well fitted to global conformal invariant theories because it works only for integer dimensions, is to reduce n-point functions to n minus one point functions. That's a Neumann Weber and Wellenhaus paper of last year. In any way, for A, we have no chance with all. So the idea is use some special properties of the function. Ah, the po point is the following. You start by the point function. Then you can uh, express by the differential operator. Get m See it like that. At the end, positive coefficients multiplied. So this is basically fitted for reducing an endpoint function to check whether the coefficients are positive only two two-point functions, but it works only for integer dimensions. Because otherwise, it's not a differential operator, it's an integral kernel, and you simply cannot do it technically for the moment. 
so <laughs> the point is there are two possible structures our function had the singularity 1 over x to the fourth so all these ones which are 1 over the uh, x to the sixth are excluded they cannot be present these are the scalar ones so we have only the fermion type ones at this point we can remember about the uh, biocal fields you can build a scalar biocal field out of the currents which projects on, on the symmetric tensor. It's a conformal B field of weights 2, 2. Then, taking the uh, coefficient to, to the singularity 1 over x1, 2 squared, we project on the inner rank symmetric tensors. And an uh, explicit calculation shows the new function has the same contribution, F contribution as the fermion one. So, since the right is computed in a free field theory, it's perfectly positive, so also the left hand side is positive. Note that in general, in the Fermion theory, there are also the odd rank axial currents. So it's not that all the contributions are the same, only half of them, the inner rank symmetric tensors, the same contribution. And this has an important co consequence which becomes even more important to analyze the stress energy tensor. The point is that if you try to add you know, the two function, because you have different right point singularities, you have a structure like that. And because you don't have functions with mixed right point uh, singularity, this requires a operator product expansion with two, at least, different uh, fields with the uh, quantum numbers of the stress term. And this is that you are in trouble because this is a signal that your theory is, in a way, a direct sum. Well, if you have fermion and uh, the new one, then there is no problem like that. It's just that um, this may be a good candidate for interaction term to uh, have fermion fields and gauge fields. And this is really speculation. There are two more indications about that. The first one is that the operator which is written here has only this the A which I have shown you before and it is uh, it appears very naturally in the operator product expansion of two stress energy tensors in the Maxwell theory and the second one is that one can cook up a non-abelian construction of this form take your one current made in a following way F is a field non-abelian they have three of that um, which satisfies not the covariant, but the normal Maxwell equation, while V is a field with curl zero. This rather artificial, the relative coefficient here is crucial because it um, makes so that some undesired terms are cancelled out in this construction. So uh, this construction works perfectly well for the point function it introduced, but it is problematic for a six-point function not a uh, innocent uh, point because there are no cases in which four point functions are okay and the first problem arises at the level of 16 point functions so uh, really it's not uh, obvious whether this can be continued here are my conclusions so I presented the complete classification of the three point functions but general, there is a compact general rating function which uh, presents a pricing factorization properties and uh, is a clear signal of respondents with the free zeroes fields. Well, for the four-point function of conservability of currents, one only one trivial candidate for interacting theory. We perform the operation, the, the product analysis and this is a good candidate good I think it's a good candidate uh, for interaction term of fermion and gauge fields now the open problems there are many more of them but uh, these are the most important so for the three point functions one should understand that factorization in particular the factorization differential operators second since every uh, conform partial wave is built function here also on the conformal blocks and one 
understand better what uh, comes out there. And one can consider also more general concept currents in four dimensions. There are also concept currents with mixed symmetry. It's not in three where um, symmetric exhausts everything. As for the four functions, there are many more open problems. First of all, one has to prove the positivity of the expression completely, then consider higher point functions, then generalize to the non-abelian case, and if possible, relax the rationality assumption. Then there is one big question. I started with the four point function of four stress energy tensors. We are still not there, but it's in the, uh, a work in progress. Under the same assumption as for the current, there are 12 structures. One has to uh, understand better because typically there are 30,000 terms in each of them. Uh, so one has to make the operator expansion, but that's work in progress, and I hope to report soon. And this the question of the common Mandua theorem. In four dimensions, it's not obvious, at least I don't know a result, which states that one more than the conformal uh, conserved currents means that you have an infinite number of them. In general, there is still the possibility that you have finite intermediate uh, algebras of conserved charges. So one has to clear up this and answer also if there is a uh, non-free theories with higher spin conserved symmetry. Thank you. Where to understand uh, the correlation functions for the stress energy tensors? Yes. Then you would gain some information about higher point functions of currents, right? Yes. But I can indeed because on why the current, which, uh, since currents are not charged with respect to the U1 case, in the stress energy tensor, you gain the information uh, since the four point functions to reproduce the three point function by the net of this. They are in this case and they are more constrained. You cannot go up to the point. If you know the four point, you cannot uh, cannot uh, know the six point unless unless you make some additional assumption because it may happen that in the operator product expansion of three pairs of tensors appear fields which were not present in the operator product expansion of two pairs. So just the four-point function is not uh, completely sufficient, but one can uh, start it the other way around. So consider the um, stress energy tensor, the four-point functions, find the algebra, then all the charged fields would be representation of this algebra. More or less what one is doing, doing in two dimensions, starting by the SO and finding the rest as uh, representations of the symmetry algebra. Although, um, technically, uh, I don't even know how to attack it uh, at this moment. One needs at least the functions to start uh, things like that. Otherwise, it's too, there's too much freedom. Also, the model synergy board of paper in three dimensions showed that unless you have some input about the four point functions, you cannot constrain the uh, system of charges. Because the argument essentially is the scale of fields the couple, so the only thing that can rest in three dimensions is the uh, free fermion.
Uh, here I'm not doing perturbative. This is a completely non-perturbative treatment. I'm Higgs space. Uh, uh, only three level is uh, conformal. Okay, no, I'm speaking about four point ones. But, uh, for two point function, there is no uh, problem at all. The, when you specify the conformal dimension at the precision that you work and the SO2 representation, they are fixed up to a constant in front. These are four point functions and they will be non trivial also in this case. At one open QCD. Yes? Honestly, I don't know. Uh, I think that uh, this is a problem already with the uh, symmetric curves. Uh, so if, if I could answer the question for the symmetric ones, then I'll start to worry about the mixed symmetry. For the moment, I have problems already with the uh, symmetric currents. Uh, you know, going to mix symmetry is a technical problem. One has to introduce a number of additional variables to control them. So here I had one vector for all the indices. If you have some sort of mix symmetry, they'll have many vectors, or you can introduce spin annotation or whatever. But it's technicality, in a way. I don't expect anything, at least I checked for small dimension cases. But there's nothing new that appears. So, uh, Hmm? Dimension up to six. Really small. <laughs> the first number of cases. <laughs> uh, why do you expect one algebra? Okay, let's thank Yasmin again.